I'm just hoping uh, this is, uh, my screen is uh, visible to everyone. Um, so as I said that today's topic is that hybrid has been a flavor of 2021 and let us see what governs the trend workspace trends specifically for 2022. Uh, now, as I, and I and as I look back, both as a uh, user of the solution as well as uh, the CEO of a startup, I think 2020 and 2021, uh, most of the company, including ours, we adopted a hybrid workplace, but that was a little unintentional. We were forced into, without much thinking, to adopt this pattern of working. Um, we will see what the data is showing us. And based upon the data, let's try to predict on one, what will be some of the important trends for 2022. Um, now, just a step back on what are the prevalent hybrid models which have been adopted globally. So I think just uh, people use it with different names. Uh, just for the purpose of segregation, I have used uh, some names here. The first is a office-centric model where companies have taken a stance and said that they would want their employees uh, to show up at the office uh, sometimes in a week. So they've sort of almost mandated that they should show up at the office while this, the return to office might not have started, but at least this seems to be the public announcement. Companies like Amazon, Apple have seemed to be in this category. Then there is a category which is hybrid remote where companies have left this option of the choice to the employees. So there is an option called as office there is flex and there is remote. And companies have left the employees to choose which one of the options they'll choose from. Uh, HubSpot and Salesforce fall in this bucket. And then there is a primarily remote first option where uh, hybrid is there, but with a small percentage. And again, some of these might just evolve over time. Companies like Twitter and GitHub have declared that around 90 plus percent of their employees would come to the office very, very, um, very occasionally, and just 5% of the people would be based out of the office. Now, again, a lot of the companies are evolving and the guidelines are changing. And I think people will experiment over the course of time of what will evolve as a, as a model. And again, it might not be one model, just like a five day work kind of took 200 years and it was there from the, from the industrialization. I think the hybrid model just got pushed and compressed in a very short time and will it take its own time to evolve. Now let's look at some of the data which is available to us of what are the benefits of the hybrid model. So I think from an employee perspective, the biggest benefit is uh, a person saves on his or her commute time. On average, around three to five hours a week. And if you, ex uh, which is when you take a two days work week. And if you extend this data for a month, uh, a person can, can save around three working days in a month just simply on commute. Now, obviously, this is a very considerable savings. Uh, employee well-being, um, especially because you're able to do a better work-life balance, you can take care of the home chores, etc. Uh, employees with families, etc. It surely gives a flexibility to all of us. Actually, the third is very interesting, and this is based upon the research by um, Professor Nicholas Bloom from the Stanford University that I'm, I'm just gonna present a snapshot of his research, that uh, when he um, ran this uh, questionnaire on a little over 20,000 uh, uh, people, and the responses showed that uh, employees actually not just feel good about it, but uh, a two to three days work from home, they almost is equal to a 8% pay hike. Now this is very, very substantial, right? So I think uh, the three important benefits from an employee point of view is saving on time, flexibility, and looking this as an increase in the salary. Now, frankly, from an employer's perspective, what are uh, the benefits? I think the biggest, without a doubt, is uh, talent retention. Uh, globally, we've heard of trends like great resignation. A lot of it has been written and spoken about it, and, and not just in US, but, but across the globe. I think uh, there is a, a great, a big trend where people are resigning and either opting for other options or just uh, not opting, opting out of the workforce. Now, obviously, so companies are forced that they have to give the flexibility to the employees if they want talent retention. 
Uh, productivity increase is, is important, but I think given the amount of data points which we have, there is obviously there was a research prior to pandemic, but unfortunately the research was limited. So I think productivity increase varies from what I've read as low, as much as 5% to as high as 20%. And I think with time, it will get more defined into what exactly would be the productivity uh, increase. Uh, there is uh, certainly uh, cost savings. And the cost savings would come because uh, these offices will get converted into hotels, right? So there's going to be the employee, the entire concept of uh, reservations would come in. And I think just to give you a perspective, if you are a company which has a thousand employees, uh, prior to pandemic, you would have around 800 to 900 seats because people would show up four to five days in a week. Now, what most of the companies would eventually do is some of these uh, desks or these seats will eventually get moved to uh, meeting rooms and collaboration spaces. But because people, employees are going to come only two to three days a week, uh, you can accommodate as much as 50% more employees. So instead of 1,000 employees, you can grow up to 1,500 and still keep the same uh, footprint of the office. So obviously there's a significant cost savings which come from the uh, making these offices uh, flexible. Now let us look exactly at the data, uh, what the data shows. So, so this is the data from the WorkinSync platform, which is collected uh, over the last one year um, with the usage of around 20,000 employees and 55 companies. Uh, 79, so I think the most interesting part is that a big percentage, as much as 79% of the employees prefer to come to the office 10 days or less than 10 days to the office. Uh, and, and a very small percentage, just 21% come more than uh, 11 days to the office and just 5% come, <coughs> sorry, 6% come for more than 20 days. Now, obviously, I think a little bit of a disclaimer here that obviously because of pandemic, the offices were really not open 365 days. So some of them could be an impact there. But this seems to be a very, very emerging trend that, again, as I said, people prefer to work two or three days from the office only. The other interesting trend uh, which our data shows is that different sectors have returned to the office in a different manner. Now, frankly, I think if you look at the uh, delivery boys, etc., uh, everybody's on the road, right? Everybody has to work from where they're supposed to work because there isn't a concept of work from home. But uh, jobs where this is available, I think we've seen a different percentages of return to office. Uh, financial sector, especially the banks, and, and we've seen the, and the statements from some the large banks like JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Wells Fargo, including some of the European banks like Deutsche Bank. Uh, they primarily are more closer to return to the office and employees showing up at the office. So the, so the amount of um, employees by the end of December were around 28, while companies more like the internet tech companies like um, Twitter, uh, Microsoft, uh, Google, Facebook, etc., obviously a far lower percentage uh, came to the office. Uh, this is kind of uh, prevalent in other sectors as well. But uh, but uh, another interesting statistics which we saw from our uh, data point was that while larger companies uh, broadly defined as enterprises, uh, enterprise returned of only around 13% were back to the office. Uh, startups, uh, both early stage and large stage, around 60% of the employees actually came back to the office. Uh, one of the reasons at least which uh, we analyzed and we found out is I think obviously enterprise have far more mature processes because of which working in a remote um, environment uh, was um, easily accomplished. Uh, whereas startups, uh, sometimes because of the process and sometimes because of the nature of the jobs, uh, the brainstorming, etc., cetera, uh, including, including a company like WorkinSync, uh, we do have a more face-to-face -face time. Uh, the other interesting stats were actually on the preferred days. Um, uh, a lot of the employers or the companies left it to the discretion of the employees in 2021 to decide what days they want to come to the office. There wasn't really a mandate there. So if left to the employees, employees preferred Tuesdays and Thursdays were the most preferred days to the office. Uh, sometimes uh, Wednesday was, was sort of in the close, um, it was in the close race. Uh, Monday wasn't really very cool about it. And frankly, Friday was the least preferred day. Uh, asking employees to come to the office on Friday was just not cool. Uh, the other interesting thing was prior to pandemic, uh, we <clears throat> saw that 
employees used to come in a wide variety so the the time at which the employees would show up at the office would vary from 7:30 a.m. to 11 a.m. Uh, but uh, during uh, the year uh, during the last year we saw that almost 100% of the employees came uh, came came and clocked into the office early uh, i think one of the reasons which i which inherently is depicted uh, by this data if you see that uh, people were coming on the same days and also trying to overlap uh, on their timings is is almost uh, showing that uh, that people are coming to the office to be with one another and which eventually means they were coming either for uh, social conversations or to collaborate right so people were making a genuine effort uh, to show up on the same days uh, or and almost at the same time while when it was not really very very structured or or uh, uh, or the mandate was given by the employer so so that's been kind of a very large uh, trend which is emerging um uh, in fact going again uh, on the same trend uh, the employees were coming to the office from collaborative work and obviously we saw uh, just a few minutes ago that how they were trying to come to the same time and i think what we've also seen that the usage of uh, meeting rooms uh, slash collaborative spaces uh, which prior to pandemic was around 11% uh, in terms of bookings while obviously informally the meeting rooms could have been used more but in terms of the actual bookings and scheduling of the meeting rooms uh, it was 11% which in the month of december which was actually a holiday month it went as high as 21% so so i think there is surely the writing on the wall that um, that collaborative work is best done of, at the office and uh, everybody understands that now uh, as i said uh, kind of uh, summarizing some of these thoughts uh, the year 2021 as we saw was uh, when hybrid became uh, an important part of everybody's work uh, work culture uh, evolving from a five day week to a hybrid but uh, a lot of hybrid which we did in 2021 um, was probably not was was more um, wasn't so much by choice but but was actually happened by chance so with 2022 now let's switch gears and see what we think will is going to be looking at 2022 uh, no uh, surprises there. I think 2022 and the, the years forward will surely look at hybrid becoming the default uh, operating system for the companies. But I think people are going to spend a lot of time, collect a lot of data and see what is working for them. So it is going to be more by design and not by chance. Uh, so uh, some of the uh, important challenges which uh, I have seen um, both organization, organizations small and large uh, think about it when they think about hybrid is the first is uh, is employee scheduling right planning coordinating we spoke a lot about uh, or at least uh, i spoke a lot in terms of the data that people want to come at the same time same day etc right so i think at some point uh, when you're doing it once in a week or uh, once in a fortnight maybe you can do it on a slack or a whatsapp group but beyond that, you would require some tools and technologies to make sure that employees are able to schedule themselves or also keeping in mind the privacy concern, see each of their teammates uh, visit to the office as well. Um, also, uh, technologies would be required to make uh, office spaces flexible. And I think uh, while uh, everybody prefers to be uh, to give their uh, choice of the days, but I think uh, eventually to make sure that the real estate utilization is proper. Um, this, this would become very, very important that the offices become uh, flexible and almost sort of like hotels. Uh, a lot of the organizations uh, will are giving flexibility to the uh, employees if they have got multiple offices to the city to visit any of their offices, etc. So I think it is almost like uh, booking an Uber experience. It just needs to be seamless, irrespective of the city or the suburb you are in so employee uh, unified employee experience is going to become very very important um, uh, i'm going to wear uh, my uh, sales hat for a few minutes here and tell you some of uh, the technology solution which which <coughs> uh, which we've made which is work in sync and i'm sure there's some there could be some others but uh, i think uh, as I mentioned, the, the three important uh, problem statements, which is uh, employee scheduling, making uh, office spaces flexible, and unified employee experience is, is very, very beautifully handled uh, by the work in sync solution. 
Uh, obviously, companies are looking at uh, one of the big use cases is around employee safety uh, in terms of declaration, maybe sometimes vaccination. I know the the, the mandate, obviously, uh, which came in yesterday is, is uh, has been different where <clears throat> the employees don't have to follow it necessarily. But I think I, as a CEO, uh, just want to make sure that uh, the employees coming to the office are vaccinated or else there is a declaration or, or there is some kind of a, a declaration that they are safe. Uh, the second and most important part is uh, employees coming to the office remain productive. So uh, as we spoke, can they at least synchronize with each other's uh, Outlook or Google Calendar and make sure that um, if we are in the marketing team, uh, at least on, on one of the days that is Tuesdays or Wednesdays, all of us uh, show up at the office in almost the same span of time uh, so that we can have our uh, whiteboarding sessions. And third, uh, very, very important uh, is the utilization of the space. Obviously, real estate is very expensive and depending upon which city you are in, the rates change. Uh, but it is very important. And as I said, if left completely uh, to the decision of the employees, everybody might just choose one or two days in a week. And what would happen, just like any other asset management problem, you will see uh, some highs and lows, maybe Tuesdays, and Thursdays might become a peak utilization day and you might actually have five low utilization days, right? So in, a, in the previous world, when, you, when we just had Saturday and Sunday as a low util days, now you might actually have five days as a low util day, right? So you would require uh, uh, technologies to make sure that the space is rightly utilized. Uh, these are some of the uh, things which, as I spoke about, and, and maybe if, if you guys are interested, we can have a scheduled uh, discussion uh, a little bit pointed around it, but these are some of the things which show the vaccination status, uh, the self-declaration. Uh, this is a tool in which uh, it's got both the options. Either the employees can choose which days they're going to be in the office or a team can decide or a team manager can decide which day uh, the team should be in the office. So it's kind of both the ways. And uh, the third, as we spoke about, uh, space management is not just about the space inside the office. Obviously, when we talk about the space inside the office, it requires things like uh, desk, collaboration spaces, meeting rooms, but it also requires that when the employees are coming to the office, can they use this one uh, technology or one app and to have a very seamless and uh, inertia-free experience where they could book their parking if your office has a parking. Um, maybe if you provide some kind of a commute, can they do that? Uh, cafeteria, if there is an option to book the cafeteria. So I think the idea is that the employee that should not, uh, if he or she decides that Tuesday they're going to be in the office, uh, within a few clicks, uh, they should be able to figure out that, you know what, I'm going to be sitting <clears throat> next to this person. Can I just get my seat books to the person? Can I block a meeting room for myself? And because I'm driving in, can I just book a parking for myself? So, so I think these kind of three become a very, very important pivotal point. There are there are others like visitor management, et cetera, which are also interesting when we talk about workspace. Uh, so I think uh, just to conclude, uh, my, my uh, thought on, on how I see things, uh, the past uh, has been really tense. Uh, present has, is, uh, is imperfect and the future is surely going to be hybrid.